here's the trusty Dremel uh, 3001. It says it's an older one. Uh, how long have I had this? Probably 15 years. Hasn't seen a lot of use. Model 300 on this portion. 120 volt, 60 hertz, 0.15 amps. It's the winding, the housing. It worked fine until I used it to cut holes in drywall overhead. I blew it out a couple of times with compressed air, but uh, not sufficiently apparently, because when I took it apart after it failed, this being the brush holder and electronics holder and slider, was completely full of drywall dust. And I found out yesterday when I took it apart that this tab, which is the AC input hot, was actually lifted up from the pad, so it wasn't making contact. Um, I ordered Triax. The Triax that is in here is no longer available that I can find. So I ordered these ones because they're uh, the only ones I could find of this package were one amp, and this is rated at 1.15 full power. So these are physically bigger. I'm not sure if they can will fit in there without shorting out the wiper. So have a look at that in a bit. Since this pad was lifted, I bent it back down after I pulled the board out. So these pull apart like that, and the contacts are inside. Here's the slider. That's the variable resistor right there. That's a wear item. The tracing can wear out from videos I've seen. This is the DIAC. It's like, uh, to keep it basic, it's like two Zener diodes. You know what those are? Back to back. Uh, and I'm guessing at its value, 40, 30 to 40 volts is fairly typical for a circuit like this. So that's what I ordered. That I can possibly replace with the one that I've gotten. Uh, this one is iffy. We'll see what happens with that. I drew out the circuit for it using an ohmmeter and a magnifying glass. And that's what I get. Hot. It's a capacitor feed to the hybrid circuit, which is a little black box that's in here. Right there. Obviously they don't want you to see what's in there. There's three connections to it. One goes through a capacitor, one goes to the DIAC to trigger the TRIAC, and one um, takes the feedback level. So looking at the circuit, I would say it triggers the TRIAC initially, and then uses this level to set the threshold once the triac is conducting. And it goes to the motor and then to neutral. This particular board is a VSC 120 volt RT261091345. VSC is the manufacturer, I believe. So I've blown and brushed out the case. Uh, initially, I will put this back together uh, just to see if that contact was the problem or not. The triax here are physically larger. They'll fit that way. You don't have to worry about the middle connector because this goes straight through. And the tab, the heatsink tab, holds it. But I don't think I can physically get that in there without causing problems. It is possible to mount it externally from there with wires is another option I suppose. So now to put it back together. Swiper. These were all bent as well from the drywall dust. Straighten them. Goes in the slider. There we go. I have to hold it in place because the spring kicks it out. Put that on. We shall see. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so it's all in place. That moves back and forth. Makes contact to all the strips. Check that with an ohmmeter. It comes back pretty far, which is why I'm concerned the new triac might short out there. So that might not be an issue looking at the circuit. because I believe that tab is also the uh, 
when it's full power, everything is shorted. It bypasses this, basically. Here's the release button, or the, sorry, the lock button for the chuck. It's in there. This has to go on to the slider. The tabs are there. Let's put this back to middle point. That in there. Pull it back just slightly. There. Now this goes towards the back end. So if you ever use one of these to cut holes in drywall over your head, be very careful. Blow it out. Open up the case and blow it out. So I've scratched this just to remove the a um, little bit of carbon buildup that was there. Uh, it's not a big deal because the commutator is completely smooth. So I just scratched it to get off some of the carbon and then I blew it off with compressed air to make sure there's no steel bits or carbon bits in between the segments. So that goes back one way or the other. I don't think it matters. As long as it's sideways. Oh, this has to have a spring right here. And that hole there goes on the button. And get it in there. Snaps into place nicely. I'll put the brushes in later. Gotta put this on too. My hands are too fat for this. So there it is plugged in. That one seems to like to slip out. And through there, there's a clamp that holds that. I'm not worrying about any of that at the moment. I just want to see if it works. Before I get into changing components. I just realized one brush is stuck. Wasn't like that before. So that would definitely stop it working. It appears to be tight in there. One thing to keep in mind is that the, the brushes and the commutator are always out of line, off-centered. And if you look inside there you can see now I've got a gap not sure how obvious that is. There's a gap between the one end of the brush and the commutator, which means that that one's in backwards. So that has to come out. Get turned around 180, put back in. Now it fits tightly. All forming a contact. When you first get the brushes, they're flat and they will bed in properly. So it doesn't matter which way they go when they're new, but after they're worn, embedded in, then they have to be changed. That is, if you take it apart, they have to go back in the correct way. Now this one is, it's got a contact sticking down inside for some reason on the brush, which is making it tight. I'm not sure why that is. Okay, they're both bedded on the commutator now. So I'll put it together and see if it works. I definitely miss not having a panel vise in an electronic workshop. So I've, the diac is a little bit bigger, so I bent the legs around, got it into the place, into place, and soldered it uh, using this. Otherwise, I couldn't see it. Then I've bent the legs around on the triac. Soldered those into place. I've checked everything with an ohmmeter. Nothing is shorted that is not supposed to be shorted. I soldered the uh, tab onto these two lines, which is where it's supposed to be. That leg is not connected, but this is the same function. 
so I should not need that connected. And now to put it together and see if I've got clearance with the wiper and if it makes good contact with the 850 ohm K ohm sorry um, resistor variable resistor there's the capacitor that feeds into the hybrid circuit and they do things like this because they don't want you to see what's in there well it's working but it's a failure you can turn it off you got one speed that's it so there's probably something else wrong inside but at least I have some Dremel left. So the parts I used, uh, the track was very difficult to get in. Uh, this iron is not fine enough for the work. And that's the finest tip I've got for this one. So that was a problem. It was very fine to work with. And I did have one of the pads lift off, so I had to put a jumper in. Uh, just all in all, not the greatest. The original triac was a Z or a ZOM Y732. I couldn't find any specs on that anywhere. So I used an LICO1-215B-TR. I think that was also from ST. Uh, the original was from ST semiconductors. And then, um, just in case, I replaced the DIAC as well. And I used the uh, DB4, which is a 40 volt DIAC. But working, just I really would have liked to have had speeds. Oh well, 50%. So hopefully you'll find this circuit diagram helpful. If not, well, then you probably don't want to go through this uh, process. What I would recommend, though, is there's lots of triacs available that are the same physical size um, as the original. They're just limited to one amp. Uh, you're kind of taking a stab in the dark, but a generic triac with um, three quadrant operation should be perfectly safe to use. It's a very simple motor speed control circuit. Uh, if there's a problem with the hybrid, then you're kind of stuffed this box here. Other than that, uh, they are repairable. It's kind of fine work. You need a very fine soldering iron to do it. And I am quite disappointed that I only have one speed, but that's about it. I think uh, my only choice now is to replace it. Because I'm not going to be able to fix that circuit unless I uh, put an external box with a motor control kind of light dimmer type operation. So... Hopefully that helps, um, and you found this interesting. It has come to my attention that this circuit has an error, and I think that can probably be explained. When I checked this with an ohmmeter, it had a short between the neutral and the hybrid circuit, and I think that's not supposed to be there. I think that explains why we have a one-speed unit. Thanks for watching. So this is more likely the circuit as it should be, not as it is.